Over the decades, America has had some anti-union and some pro-union presidents. But it's never had one take a stand on behalf of a union organizing drive as forthright and powerful as the statement President Biden issued Sunday. Biden took aim at Amazon's opposition to an organizing drive among its warehouse workers in Bessemer, Allah. Some 6,000 employees in the Deep South state were mailed unionization ballots on February 8 and given seven weeks to cast their vote for or against representation by the retail, wholesale and department store union. This is the most significant unionization drive faced by Amazon anywhere in the US, and the company has been drawing from the standard corporate playbook in fighting it. Amazon has subjected the workers to compulsory workplace town halls at which they're subjected to anti-union propaganda. Anti-union placards have been posted all about the warehouse, and employees have said they've been confronted one-on-one -on -one by supervisors with anti-union messages. The company also tried to persuade the National Labor Relations Board to allow in-person balloting, at a tent erected on the warehouse grounds. It lost that fight, as the NLRB ruled that the level of coronavirus infection in the area warranted conducting the vote entirely by mail. Late Sunday, Biden weighed in, tweeting a two-minute video message in which he delivered strong support for the right to organize a union without intimidation or threats by employers. Biden didn't mention Amazon by name, but his thrust was crystal clear. Today and over the next few weeks, workers in Alabama and all across America are voting on whether to organize a union in their workplace, he said. There should be no intimidation, no coercion, no threat, no anti-union propaganda. During his presidential campaign, Biden pledged to be the most pro-union president you've ever seen. His statement Sunday goes well beyond any action ever taken by a president. Franklin Roosevelt was arguably the most pro-labor president before now, having signed the National Labor Relations Act into law in 1935. FDR's appointee as Labor Secretary, Francis Perkins, had to clean up the Department of Labor, physically, as its offices were infested with giant cockroaches, and administratively. Established under Taft in 1913, the agency had become a shadowy and hidebound hive of corruption under the president's Republican successors. Its most notable unit was the notorious Section 24, which had evolved into an instrument for employers to use to harass labor organizers and for its staff to shake down foreign-born laborers for cash. Perkins promptly disbanded the unit. Prior to that, the most notable presidential action taken on labor issues was that of Grover Cleveland, who deployed federal troops to help quash a strike in 1894 against the Pullman sleeping car company that threatened to spread through the railroad industry nationwide.